compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. A photographic detective. The Almaty archive of cinema and photo documents. Cards filled in the 60s. Is it really a sensation? Kazakhstan, the revolution. Kazakhstan before the revolution. Bakayev Jangir is one of the last Kazakh Khans. Here's a portrait. Let's find a picture of the Khan of Bukayev Horde. No, it just does not work out that way. Most likely, this is the grandson of Jangir, the poet Shangarei Bukayev. Just an error in description. In Soviet times, few people were interested in Khans, it wasn't safe. Therefore, it's not surprising that in Kazakh history, including photographic history, there are so many undeveloped prints. Almost detective-like. And according to the laws of the genre, the result is unexpected. The house was filled with portraits which he ordered of himself and his children. Only a few remain because of the daguerreotype, which is such a fragile thing and has a very volatile image. A story with photos of Jean Gilles? I think it's still going on. Chapter 1. A Mirror with a Memory These portraits do not flatter anyone. They don't hide a single wrinkle, nothing that an obliging artist usually does not pay attention to. Many don't like this accuracy, but on the other hand, it's amazing. From the newspaper Northern Bee, 1843. St. Petersburg, the office of curiosity. Khan Jangir and his wife Fatima probably have been here. In some ways, they are still here. It is commonly believed that this photo shows the royal couple. With some high probability, we can say that this is Jangir Khan of the Bukhev horde and his wife, but we cannot confirm this reliably. For a long time, it was considered the earliest photo of the Department of Central Asia, dated no later than 1845, the time of the Khan's death. The picture is glued to a white passport of the adornments, the stigma atelier of Vishnevsky. In 1834, Jangir Khan was seen wearing the same clothes in which he was taken in the photograph. A skull cap covered with sable, a Kazakh pointed cap on its side and a flat ring on its side on the right. From the article by Valentina Prishchepova about the portrait of Jangir. From the point of view of probability, it's quite possible. 1839 is the year of the photo, more precisely, of the daguerreotype. In November 1841, the first atelier was already in the Russian capital. The owners were Frenchman Alfred d'Avignon and Henri Le Faucon. The Museum of Photography, St. Petersburg. It was impossible to wear light blue things, pale pink things, yellow. It was better not to wear because the emulsion was sensitive to not all the colors of the spectrum. And accordingly, the image could end up unnatural. The rule of etiquette for the upper classes is compressed lips and a serious face. A smile is the lot of simpletons, daguerreotypes often called a mirror with memory. The image turned out to be a mirror. Maybe that's why Emperor Nicholas was never photographed. He was such a man who scrupulously sought accuracy. Let's say in wearing a uniform and in his presence, all were in uniform. And on the daguerreotype, the saber was on the other side. All the orders and medals on the other side. It was out of shape. Metallic silver, plated plate, treated with mercury vapors. Recommendations for examination. Put on a black velvet dress and hold the daguerreotype at an angle to the light falling from behind. Depending on the angle of view, you either see nothing, a positive or a negative. There was such a peculiar property to it. If it was hanging on the wall, it was necessary to come closer to catch the picture, and if in your hands, to turn it. An attempt to catch the truth. By the mid-40s in St. Petersburg, there were already about five daguerreotype institutions. 
It was known that Khan Zhangil had been in the city many times and quoting writer Aksakov, usually clever and educated, was interested in technical novelties. The price didn't matter. He always demanded from his subordinates to search for a new exchange experience, if possible, to invite the masters themselves. The daguerreotype cost, well, already there were by the end of the 40s, it was about three rubles. It was quite a serious price. For this money, one could buy a cow. And the paying capacity of citizens was low, and the master of the light painting moved to travel. The first of them, the aforementioned Frenchman Davignon from 1843 to 1845, traveled around Siberia and visited Central Asia. He photographed everyone who could afford it, wealthy merchants, of course, and governors. But in Astrakhan, where allegedly the Khan and his wife were photographed, there is no mention of him. But he was in Kazan, when in 1844 the city was visited by Jangar Khan, six traveling daguerreotypists worked there, including Davignon. How could a Khan, an honorary member of Kazan University, who was not averse to fashionable trends, not visit one of them? Chapter 2, The Mystery of the Disappearing Prince. Do not pass the passion for daguerreotype portraits. One should always wait for their turn. Pleasant entertainment to the guards' officers. Nothing in the daguerreotype comes out as distinctly and effectively as sewing a uniform and epaulettes. The newspaper, Northern Bee, 1843. Astrakhan, the local history museum. Photos of Stepan Vishnevsky. Here is the Kalmuk princess, Elzen Tsuk. More pictures. The similarity in design is easy to grasp, but the Italia was opened in 1861, 16 years after Zhangir's death. He died in 45, and the studio of Vishnevsky started in the 60s. However, it could be a reprint. Daguerreotypes are sensitive. The image sometimes just disappears in front of your eyes. And to save it, they turned again to photographers. Photographers willingly provided such services with a reshoot and a restoration. Relatives of the Khan live near Astrakhan. They could have done the reprint. And then the question is, how much does the image correspond to the realities of the time? In the photo, a young woman holds her hand near the stomach, as if emphasizing that she is expecting. From the article by Valentina Prishepova about the portrait of Jangir. If we assume that we have Fatima, the Khan's woman in the picture, then this pregnancy was not taken into account by the historians. The youngest son of the royal couple was Gubaidula. Gubaidula was born to Khan Jangir and his second wife Fatima in 1840. And at this time, neither in Astrakhan nor in St. Petersburg did a photo studio exist. And other details do not match with historical chronicles. It is known that Jangir had the highest military rank. Jangir is the first general of the Kazakhs. The rank of major general corresponds to two stars. There is only one in the photo. Epaulettes were applied with thick fringes, which is also not observed. The uniform of the Khan should look like that approximately. Uralsk, the Museum of Jangir. And there was a crimson ribbon, and of course there were orders of the first and second degree. The one who posed had only a commander-in-chief rank. And one more picture, which is attributed to the Khan. Obviously, it's not a daguerreotype. It was made in the 60s. Neither of these photos stand up to criticism. So at least one secret can be closed and open up new ones. Then who is in these pictures? And still maybe the Khan's picture exists? Chapter 3, A Detective with Continuation. Joseph Weniger from Vienna is honored to announce to the most respectable public that in all weather, he produces daguerreotype portraits for individuals and groups. Prices vary from five to 10 rubles for a good match. The session lasts a few seconds. From the Vedomosti of the St. Petersburg City Police, 1844. 
Come to the museum to solve the riddle and leafing through the book, find one more. This is a group of Kazakhs in national clothing. This picture is stored in the Russian Ethnographic Museum, made in the studio of Vininga. In the center of the composition is the most important person. Nearby, clinging to his knees, is a boy of about 10 years. Apparently his relative, perhaps his son. Rich clothes emphasize their belonging to the upper class. High hats made of white felt were among the most prestigious headdresses. Can this be Khan Zhangir? Venegas' photo house was opened in 1843. The Khan and his retinue could have been in St. Petersburg the same year. And if he was, of course, he met with his son, Sahib Gire. He studied in the Corps of Pages. They recruited the Corps of Pages only on the personal approval of the sovereign. However, at that time, Sahib Gire was 14 years old, but Jangir had another son, Ibrahim, who was just 11 years old. Presumably, here he lies in the photo. Later, Ibrahim also studied in the Corps of Pages, but at first he was listed as an Orenburg cadet, who, from June 1844, had to have braids on their trousers. Maybe Jangir took Ibrahim with him, for example, to agree on the accepting of the boy in the pages. The question of the two older children, Sahib Gare and Ibrahim, was being solved about their education in St. Petersburg. By the way, the daguerreotype portrait of Sahib Gere existed. Contemporaries confirm it. To the right of the hall was the entrance to the living room, a small room. There was a piano in it and portraits of the Emperor Jangir and the son, Sahib Gere. Ivan Ivanov from the article, Jangir Khan. Not in a case, not in a box, but in a special mat. It was like an engraving or a picture. The size could be either a full plate or half, quarter, and this form was already hung on the wall. Weren't the plates made at the same time? And how did this one survive? Later, of course, they learned how to make copies. You could duplicate daguerreotypes, but initially, it was just one copy. Jangir Khan, at the supposed time, was little more than 40 years old, which is exactly the same as the age of the men on the daguerreotype. For comparison, this is the photo of the younger son of the Khan, Gubaidullah, approximately at the same age. Something related can be detected. The face of the unknown looks sick. It is noteworthy that Jangir's health in 1844 caused concern for his relatives, and it happened during the trip. something like an apoplexy. It's difficult to judge the sophistication of a costume just as we see the orders that the Khan used to wear on solemn occasions. And this is a drawing from the portrait of a Khan which was made in his lifetime. The original was kept by his biographer, Ivanov. A strong build, medium height, gray eyes, arms white and tender, beard, mustache and eyebrows light and sparse brown from the memoirs of Karl Gebel. And the arguments against what his eyes were are not clear, but it seems they're not gray. And most importantly, all the capital visits had to be accounted for. But so far, the confirmation of the Khan was in St. Petersburg in the 1940s are not found. And as for the similarity, it could have been a relative of the Khan. Epilogue, such strange coincidences. The catalogues indicate that this picture in 1919 was transferred to the museum by a certain Dashkov. Perhaps it was the brother of the famous collector, Pavel Dashkov. It's not known how the daguerreotype came to his hands, but it is known that Dmitri Dashkov was in the imperial suite, just like the younger son of Jangir Gubaidullah, Genghis Khan. Service in the retinue of the sovereign, he was a retinue general. And in the same 1919, the widow of Gubadola was also given a part of the family possessions to the same ethnographic museum. This pillow was brought to the museum in 1919 as part of a small collection, transferred by Feodosia, Genghis Khan, the wife of the youngest son of Khan Jangir. Perhaps it's just a coincidence, but if this is not Jangir, then this still miraculously preserved shot is unique.
one of the first pictures of the Kazakh aristocracy, if not the very first. And who is then pictured in the photo? It seems that in this photographic investigation, it is possible to put only mysteries. Thank you.